Hey there, I'm Rav, and I'm here to tell you how to play a pot of. Apotosaurus is a fairly large herbivore sauropod, and as of this video, the largest creature in the game. With its pretty decent speed for a creature its size and its versatile nature, you will have plenty of fun in this murder tank, as most creatures will find it pretty hard to take you head on alone. As a group of Apatos, you are an almost unstoppable force to most of the roster, and I think you'll find playing Apato probably a lot simpler than most people make it out to be. Apato has three main attacks. Apato's first attack that we'll be talking about, and its main attack, is this whip. Depending on where you look, it will focus on the left or right. You can also hold this attack so you can position it better. This does, however, come at the cost of AP, so don't hold it for too long. This attack is very good at zoning and less a DPS attack, as your whip does quite a bit of knockback, so try not to only use the whip for damage if possible. You can also increase the DPS of your attack by getting whip crack, which is a pointy talent. I recommend getting at least two for most purposes. Also, for the new players here, it does not, in fact, decrease the amount of AP used when you invest more in the talent, so keep that in mind when you're whipping. Apato's second attack is a kick that you can use by clicking the left mouse button. This is a smaller attack that deals less damage and does more injury. You can kick using both feet, but there's really not much of a difference. It does help on the range depending on where it's used though. The kick is extremely useful for crippling the targets that get a little too close to you, and I have found that by using this first and then using your next swing or whip, you can secure most of your targets pretty quick. As a reminder, this is mostly an injury dealer, so don't try and use this as your main damage unless it's just very easy. Apato's third and final attack is called neck swing. Apato, well, it neck swings. <laughs> Uh, right in front of itself, dealing a lot of high damage. This ability, like Whipcrack, can also be upgraded to be faster using the talent Earthbreaker, and there is a pretty big difference, so try and put points in there if you can. I don't really use this ability as often as the other two, to be honest, but this is really good for Mega Raptor and Megalo when they jump through your neck, and will more than likely force them to sit and heal for a bit. Keep in mind, you can't use this ability while you're running or walking, so if you're in the middle of a chase, you probably shouldn't be using this. Now moving on to the next stage, Apato's Passes are... Natural plus 3 Stoic. This helps not get punted around by Koas, Patches, and other Apatos so that you can maneuver better. A 50% reduction on tail hits when it's whipping its tail. This makes it so Apato is not getting tanked by heavy hitters on its tail. Do keep in mind this does stack with your Thick Hide, and if the enemy does not have Bruiser, they do very little damage. So make sure to use this to your advantage. And the last one is, Apato is immune to injury. Apato just doesn't take injury from attacks, it's as simple as that. And now for the real last one, because I can't be bothered to unedit the last one, is it has a passive knockback when it's walking and running. This makes it so things can't just run through you and actually have to face you. It can also be helpful for pushing babies when they're AFK. Now for the real, real last ability, because I cannot be bothered to remember all this and edit it out. So, if you press the left control button, you go backwards, and the speed at which you go backwards is depending on what you have in the talents invested. Going backwards is extremely powerful, and for this creature, I would highly recommend getting it. Now that you know what Apato can do with its attacks, let's go into how it plays. Apato, as the time of this video, is by far the most versatile creature when it comes to attacks and playstyles. Unlike before, where even if you built speed, you were fairly slow, you are now very fast and about comparable to a Koa in terms of speed. That being said, the difference between you and a Koa is that you do not take any injury, so you can pretty much go freely into a Rex or Koa, kick them once or twice, then use your tail attack to finish them off because they will be massively slowed. Try not to run out of stamina when attacking creatures, your stamina is your biggest ally along with your speed. Also try and only take hits on your tail if possible because of the 50% reduction when whipping, and try and keep your tail up when you're not attacking to prevent cheese. Now into the next portion of the video, we're gonna go over some matchups for Apato. The first creature we are gonna be going over is Acro. This matchup will be your hardest matchup on land and most likely what you're gonna be getting attacked by the most. The big thing with this matchup is avoid getting bleed and to force the Acros into bad spots. The damage reduction while half as effective on you as other creatures still lowers your injury and trying to kick them may give you too much bleed to start with. I would try and use a hill to get them injury from falling or have one Apato try and stack injury and then have the others attempt to trap them in a whip cage to try and kill one as fast as possible. In a straight 4v4, this fight is doable but still on the harder side as Acro can rotate in and out their members because of bleed preventing healing, and if they have half a brain, they will intimrar the Apato, dishing out the most damage, and then swap so one can heal and the rest can put on pressure. 
Try and stay in close proximity of each other, and if one acker messes up, you need to punish it. As in a fight of attrition, you do not have the upper hand. However, this fight becomes a lot easier with the help of Apato's current and only herdmate, Para. Para can really turn the tide as it has the speed to keep up or even catch acro, which Appa cannot do unless it really stacks a good amount of injury, and can prevent acro from healing off any injury or damage by keeping them from resting. Para also does a pretty good amount of damage and injury with stomps, so they are not to be underestimated even when they are not by you, as after something attacks, they can easily come out and ambush your would-be killers. At the end of the day, as I mentioned before, this will be your hardest matchup by a long shot. If they have more numbers than you, try and avoid them when you can, and try and get para players to join you whenever possible, or if you're on a private server, Ori is also a very good companion, and in my opinion, the better one of the two, but para is never a bad pick either. These guys are designed for creatures like you, and expect a long, drawn-out fight, and good luck. The next matchup we have is Rex. This matchup, in my experience, is more in your favor if this is a 1v1. In a 3 or 4 max group, the Apatos definitely have the upper hand, but should not be looked down upon. Rex does a lot of damage to Apatos. It's not as nimble as some of the other creatures and has to manage its stamina carefully, otherwise the Apatos may run them down. I like to run through a Rex if possible, as stacking injury on them is fairly easy. Though be careful with stamina bite, as it may put you in a rough spot and Rex's burst may kill you. Try and only take tail hits if possible and rip from the side and not directly behind yourself to prevent getting hit. The biggest thing about this matchup is to not be intimidated by Rex. Remember, all that power that it has means nothing if it can't hit you, which more than likely it won't. Next up on the list we have Koa. This matchup is fairly hard in a 1v1, but in a 3v4 you should have zero issues at the minimum being able to run away, but it should be easy to fight them if you play your cards right. Because Koa can use its reduction on its head to lower your damage, it can tank your damaging abilities fairly easily and afford to taste tank you. This being said, and what a lot of players fail to mention, is that Koa is very light and prone to getting knocked back pretty far. Meaning that if you are on a cliff, they can die from fall damage. And the other, which is the biggest one I don't feel players understand, is Koa is really not that much faster than you. This means that being fat, injured, or if you can play with them, or a blinded, can make it so you can catch them or run away, because you can pick and choose your battles. So don't let players tell you this is an impossible feat, because it's not. That being said, much like the acro matchup, they can very easily trade with you, so when you are outnumbered, you may lose. So try and stay at least in a duo, or in a place with good terrain. Now I'm going to butcher this name, but Webinator or Megalosaurus, as some of you may know, and Megaraptor. This is not a very hard matchup at all. These guys don't have the HP to tank you, nor the damage to burst you down. So this is really just a battle of attrition that more than likely you will win. Two hits from your tail, a few kicks, or even one head swipe is for the most part good enough to make most of these guys run away from you, and in this group of Apatos, most will not even try. The important thing is to not get intimidated by the numbers, and tail manipulation by holding right click can help a lot with these guys. Now for our last land matchup, we have Cychania. Unless you have zero speed, this matchup is not too bad and is in your favor as long as you're mindful of your stamina and how you whip. Psy will definitely out tank you without a doubt as Psy ignores thick hide and has access to exhausting bite, meaning they can slow you down quite a bit if you are mindlessly whipping them or get too close. Try and keep your tail up when you're not doing damage and when they reflect holds your whip so that after the shield goes down, you can do damage. If the Psy is combat survival and has no speed, this is a pretty free kill, but if they are speed and you have no speed, you should be very mindful as they can catch you. I recommend you have at least two speed or go full aqua to swim away, as Apato has a pretty decent swimming speed and with two speed is enough to get away from high inherit speed builds. This being said, if the Cychania has sure-footed, they will catch you. So if you see a Psy with sure-footed and speed, try and avoid hills if you can. The Aquatics and the Semi-Aquatics. I won't go over this one too much as in the water, the important thing to know is that Apata loses its next swing. And as all the Aquatics and Semi-Aquatics at the time of this video can dart, I highly recommend staying out of the water. That being said, Aqua Apato or Aquato is quite fun and I enjoy it a lot on the official servers. AT at the moment is very powerful with the Stormlord buffs and should be avoided when possible. Chrono and Moza both have a lot of potential to kill you quickly with Chrono being able to more or less tank you and Moza that if big enough can grab you, though they are a lot bigger and longer, so they're easier to hit. So if they dart, you may be able to hit them a few times. Apato also has a natural resistance to grabs, so things like Moza and the birds can be avoided pretty easily. Now that we've discussed the creatures you'll be fighting, 
Let's go over the builds that it will be best optimized to face them. Keep in mind, this is my personal opinion of the builds. So if you think you have a better build or maybe your friend showed you one, don't be afraid to do that instead, as these are the builds that I go that work for me. For Apato, the most popular build at the moment is Combat Speed. This is so you can capitalize on Apato's freakishly fast speed for something that can take injury, as well as do good damage to the things that you can fight. I recommend taking Strong Lungs, then 1 out of 3, your Whip Crack ability, then going back down the tree maxing bruiser. This build tends to be on the less defensive side talent wise, but Apato's best defense is its offense, so don't be too afraid to tank if you have to. After the 1.2 build is done, I do like to go into the kite if possible, or max my backup. Do whatever you think is right, and don't be afraid to max the speed first either. The second build I see is Combat Survival. This build is very tanky and does a high amount of damage, making tanking this build almost impossible. Since you will also be taking thick kite, mid tiers and below especially will have trouble doing any significant significant damage, and your higher tier enemies will have to be more wary of how they approach you. This build, however, is very slow and difficult terrain or water barriers are your biggest enemies, so try and stay in flat areas with lots of spots to cover your sides to avoid getting flanked easily. With this build, you can have a lot more versatility, as botanist and shelter can be interchangeable, or you can go straight into aqua or earthbreaker to help you with other fights that are more situational. The last build we'll be going over is what I call the support build, and I almost never see this, and it's the speed survival build. This build takes shelter, intim, and speed so that the group is safe at all times from the elements and smaller predators. This build by itself though is very bad at fighting as you don't do much damage and don't have bruiser. If you have three apostles with the other builds, having one of these guys can really help out, but players that play this are far in between so don't expect it. Now we're going to go over the life strategies and the pros and cons of playing Apato. Apato truly is the tank of Bob, and playing it is pretty fun once you learn how to use it. With it having the highest HP in the game, arguably the best DPS, various ways to attack from all directions, having what is basically a mini Rex as a herd mate, a 50% reduction on your tail when attacking, and its oddly fast speed, the most skilled of players will abuse this creature to wreak havoc on the server. This being said, it does have its weaknesses, such as being very weak to drawn out fights, since it does not heal very well, and bleed only makes this worse. Other than Psy, it is still one of the slower creatures in the game, meaning traveling can take quite a while, and trials can be tedious due to this. Being in the wide open can really suck, as Apato is very good at area denial, and being in an open space can make it hard to protect each other. And finally, its biggest flaw in my opinion is its tail, while being a great tool for keeping enemies at bay, can be quite annoying, as you may save enemies from getting hit by your teammates from the knockback. However, you can build back up to negate this, so it's not too bad. Being on high places works very well, and being in tight spaces can also do the job as long as you try and avoid being in the open. Since being in a high spot means if you knock them down, you can do a lot of fall damage, and when you're in choke points, this lets you control the area much better with your tail. Alrighty, that's all I have for today's video. If you guys need to go practice your skills, don't be afraid to play on a DM server. It's a great place to learn. And if you guys think I missed something, feel free to put something in the comments below to help others out. I really hope this guide helped you. Good luck on your journey and have a good day.